distinguished co-chairs, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies. First of all, I am very pleased to participate in the OECD Southeast Asia Regional Program Ministerial Conference with video message, which is being held for the second time following the first conference in Tokyo in 2018. I would like to thank the co-chairs, Korea and Thailand, and the OECD Secretariat for their dedication for organizing this ministerial conference. Prior to assuming the post of Minister for Foreign Affairs, I participated in the OECD Ministerial Council meetings as Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries in 2013 and 2014. I experienced firsthand the great significance of the OECD's activities. Today, I'd like to share my thoughts with you based on such experience. I hope that this conference will lead to further strengthen the relationship between the OECD South and Southeast Asian countries. The OECD's strengths are firstly, its analysis and policy recommendations based on deep expertise in the very wide range of economic and social fields. When Japan joined the OECD in 1964, we were able to take advantage of the OECD's knowledge and experience to carry out various domestic reforms. Second, the OECD has played a major role as a forum for policy coordination and rulemaking on advanced issues. Indeed, the OECD's knowledge is indispensable in addressing the global challenges we are facing today. Whether it is economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, digitalization of the economy and the related issues, or the realization of a green society and other measures needed to curb climate change. Today, the common risk to the world is COVID-19 and the OECD is playing a constructive role in this area. Japan has been closely working with the OECD in addressing various issues as we work to recover from the pandemic. For example, in order for countries to overcome economic and social vulnerabilities, build resilient supply chains, and achieve mid to long-term growth, it is critical to implement quality infrastructure. Japan, in cooperation with the OECD, is promoting the implementation of the G20 principles for quality infrastructure investment, which encourage development of resilient infrastructure. In addition, for each country to attract quality investment, the practice of responsible business conduct is required. Japan is working with the OECD to disseminate the guidelines for multinational enterprises in the Southeast Asian region. The OECD's law is crucial in promoting digitalization, which is an urgent issue for all countries. In the digital field, it is essential to create an environment in which people and companies of each country can freely and securely use data. Japan will continue to play a central role in promoting data free from with trust or DFFT in cooperation with the OECD and others. The development of human resources is also important, both in the promotion of this digitalization process and in the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. In this connection, Japan has been supporting human resource development and technical cooperation in the Southeast Asian region and will continue to do so in the future. I am convinced that the OECD can make a significant contribution to addressing the challenges faced by Southeast Asian countries and to ASEAN's regional integration efforts. Through the activities of CELAP, I hope that we can share the significance of becoming a member of the OECD. Japan is looking forward to working together with the Southeast Asian countries towards an inclusive future at the forums of the OECD among other occasions. Last but not least, I would like to assure you that Japan will continue to contribute actively to the work of CELAP. Together with Australia and Vietnam, the incoming co-chair 
chairs of CELAP, Secretary General Coleman, and other countries. Thank you very much for your attention.